looks at the Pro players on IM not having uh, the best luck. He's 1-3, and, and he did lose a Pro Loss versus Pro Loss, making up one of his three losses. And these are all the Pro League matches he played because he did not play on a Kespa team before he was on Incredible Miracle. He was a Star Tail player and did not play any Pro League matches in StarCraft 1. So just interesting to note. Yeah. And over on the other side of things for generic Groomings, it is Terminator. He has a Pro League total record of 25 and 35. That is under 50, but this is such a competitive league that even having a bunch of wins is very hard to do. This guy so far is 2-1 and 1-1 one and one and one versus Protoss. Yeah, he was fielded a lot for Kespa's 8th team and did not produce the best results. And uh, we'll see. He's, he's doing okay. He's doing a little bit better this season, and he's been fielded multiple times. The map is out, Boxer. It looks like it's loaded. The players are ready, so let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it. LTA는 SK Telecom. Up here in the top left, the red Protoss for Incredible Miracle. This is Squirtle. Squirtle, yeah. Squirtle. <laughs> well done. I'm sorry. <laughs> the bottom right, <laughs> Virginia Green Wings, it's Terminator. I'm not going to make an Arnold Schwarzenegger animation. I'm not very good at it. It's all. I just had a brain fart. I'll just leave. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna acknowledge it. You saw. You saw my facial expression. But, uh, I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Yep. Yeah. So, Outboxer is a two-player map. There. You know. I always want to say that, I, the island bases on this map will never come into play. But you know what? In Protoss versus Protoss. Taking a third base in this matchup can be the deciding factor in a game. If you just take a warp prism and take a third base at the uh, island, you you can do that. The problem really being that it's not just an island; it's a uh, creep tumor up island. So you have to kill the tumor, which involves a little bit of additional work of warping the zealot or drop a zealot with your probe, and then you have to just bury over probes if you want your um, you know saturation up. Well, then we could see a player considering because then his third base would be totally uh, safe from ground-based attacks and would have to require air units to be made or war prisms to, to send over. And that's actually something you can't really do in this matchup without sacrificing a lot of your resources. So I say never say never. The likelihood, I would, I would put it at like less than 10%, maybe even less than 5%. Uh, but it's just something to, to note about this map. There are islands. There are definitely islands here. Before this game started, we had a really big cheer for Jenner Groomings here. Of course, a lot of people are also cheering for I Am, Incredible Miracle. They want the underdog to come through here. Of course, just, you know, regular fans of I Am, of course, are down here as well. And uh, no second guess so far, taken for Squirtle. Yeah, that's an interesting choice. He's going to actually chrono boost out a Zealot as well to put a little bit of pressure on. And he has a faster core, so he must have had just a really rushed out gateway, which is part of the reason for this. And uh, now going to be scouted by Terminator. Second gas goes up to Terminator can't gas steal. And he's even going to go double gate here. So he could actually just uh, go for two or three gateway pressure with Warpins to punish any greedy play that Terminator might put on. We talked about how this it has to be a 3-0 for IM, but you really could think about it in another way. Whereas for them to advance, it has to be a 4-0 because that uh, sudden death match will also just be a best of one, like an ace match. Yeah, actually. Uh, they could they could take a three well and lose and basically we just have an extra match here, um, but they need to take four in a row um, to take you know that playoff spot. Yeah. And uh, the biggest thing about that fourth match is that they can put whoever they want in that match. True, they including MVP, he was uh, there on the bench, and uh, Liquid Hero could also be selected. He's also here today, so we'll see what uh, what he can get done here. Squirrel that is with his very first uh, gateway units coming out. So Chrono boosting both gateways. And uh, in fact, Terminator goes into one base robotics. Very rare to see. That's how safe he wants to play this. And then starts a second gateway. So he's going to be very safe against the, the pressure that's coming out here with his first Immortal. And yep. this means that Squirtle is going to have to change up his tactics a little bit. 
interesting out of Terminator here. He came in with this probe. He saw the second gateway go down, and he said, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna back off. I'm gonna play really really safe here, get my sensory out, and uh, just play it on my terms from here on." Hello. Hello. <laughs> You're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. So, I think uh, well, let's just wait and see how this one plays out because Squirtle is also going into Twilight Council behind this, and unfortunately for him. Mortals are going to be good against both things that come out of that. Um, well, here we go. The Mothership Core can be used right away. And he will save that Mothership Core now. He needs to save his units as well. And those force fields are not going to be, you know, too useful since the units are already at the top of the ramp. He could have prevented this with the force field on the ramp. And now, uh, this pylon should be picked off. The Mothership Core needs to be pulled back. And the Immortal, though, that's the, the big... The big game changer. Once the immortal is out, stalkers are no longer as useful, and then he's going to be able to start a second immortal. He's just constantly ready there to get a second warp and hallucinating an immortal, making it very difficult for him to decide which one is the right one. And he has to target correctly. And there's the recall. He's not even going to stick around. Yeah, he was able to get a give round, but from there, very nicely played by Terminator with the hallucination. Also, the probe got killed, so he wasn't able to make that uh, pylon on top of the ramp. That was a really cool Squirtle. split decision choice to make that hallucinate an immortal. Um, of course, Squirtle probably saw it made, and he would have realized very quickly that it was fake, but just little things like that. And, uh, didn't it. and who knows what's to say that Squirtle didn't see it. He sees two immortals and recalls instantly because he's like, well, against two immortals, I could do nothing here. And he just walks away. Um, you know, I don't have an observing BC. I can't tell you exactly what he saw or how he reacted. Yeah. But this, just something like that costs you a little bit of energy, and when your sentries aren't very useful otherwise uh, in this type of situation, it's a pretty good choice. It's, uh, you know, just playing it safe. You know, he, he has to win this game for Incredible Miracle right now. And for him to see that second mortal, even if he saw it or not, he's like, okay, I'm out. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull back, get my base up. If he has two mortals or even one, maybe I can get my uh, Nexus up a little bit quicker and get an advantage like that. You know, just putting on a little bit of pressure right there, just trying to get as any advantage that you can. You did get a pylon in the base as well. So um, getting a little bit of something out of the attack at least. Yeah. Oh, he then finds this second one. I jumped over there and just threw with the angle I was looking at. I couldn't see the pile in the field. Freaking out when he saw his canopy. Um, not the case though. Warp Prism coming up here for Squirtle. And Forge finishes for Terminator so he can, you know, first of all, get his plus one and further defend by adding cannons in the middle of the line to get the new warp in. This is a small little force that's going to be annoying because it has wind. It's going to get one probe. To be able to get two and then get away, even the overcharge being forced there. Very interesting. It. Yep. Being used to push out that little force of Squirtle. Squirtle doing a decent job here. Look at this. Having three sentries in that uh, war prison. Maybe want to uh, force field off those probes. Yeah, mineral line. Like that's the plan. I mean, just little things like this can get you back into a game. What you might also be able to do, if there's not a lot of units in here, is warp in zealots force sealed the ramp, and then blink in after the Immortals are dead. This could be a really cool tactic. Let's see how well it goes for him. Looks like he's more focused on force sealing the, uh, the sentries, or rather the, uh, the probes, and that's what he's going to go for here. No We're cannon in the main base. How exactly, how fast he does this. Where are the force fields? Here's one, but it doesn't quite get all the probes. Yeah. Looks like he's going to have to get out after just getting two of those probes. He's going to disrupt a lot of mining with this. Um, definitely not a critical amount of damage. But anything, anything counts when you don't lose any of your sentries. You don't lose your war prism. And he's going to actually have the stalker position in such a great spot to intercept scouts. And uh-oh, on the other hand, he needs to get them away now for uh, dodging the army. Does blink away. And the sentries here going to be warped in again. I'm really curious to see what Squirrel's next move is to get back in this game. He's adding a robotic war base. He's going to Colossi first. And... I mean, just tech-wise, before that, he was so behind because it was Immortals that already, you know, before he even had his robotics started, uh, going up to, like, three. And this is something that I'm going able to move across the map with right now and start poking because he has Immortals in his main base except for the defense. This is a very scary drop. This is the kind of drop that can do critical damage if you are not prepared. Yeah, he can send it over here to try to pick off one of these immortals, or just maybe go for a couple of those probes in the main base as well. No blink out just yet for Terminator, so he's going to have not the best drop defense here. At the same time, he's putting on all of this pressure and keeping all of the army of Terminator over here. He's taking very, very fast these Colossi. 
getting the first one out as well as range. The thing about this drop is that he could actually just try to kill a Stalker and lift up because the Immortals have so many hit points, even though there's three Immortals, you know, if, uh, if uh, you can just tank them so much because of those hardened shields. And it's about armor and those shields rather than those about the Immortals that you could kill. An Immortal can two-shot approach, so you want to go fly away. If there's a pylon, there's no defense, he gets a pylon, so it's just a threat more than a, a big investment. And a lot of gateways being added for Terminator here. He could very well attack into Squirtle's third base as soon as it's planted. He's got so many units, and he's got so many Immortals. Um, adding a Stargate now as well. Really curious to see what that one's going to be for. If he tries to rush Tempest out, it would be the right choice against the Colossi of his opponent, and that would uh, be a good answer. But it's very expensive for him while he's still on two bases. His third base gases have not yet been taken. Yep, just now dropping that third base out. So, it looks like uh, his birthday was yesterday. Yeah. And now Squirtle dropping his own third base basically at the same time. And he's going to see the timing of the third base of Terminator as well. Yeah, and uh, both of these guys are going into heavy tech. The Archon choice coming out for Terminator and he's skipping Colossi entirely right now and getting the Tempest to deal with his opponent's Colossi, you know, to help deal with his opponent's Archons. Whatever you can target from, from range. There's the Fleet Beacon. And this is Scouting, of course. Yep, he's going to see everything that's going on in here. Hello. You can't hear me. You can't hear us. <laughs> But uh, that wasn't the swiftest or quickest dodge. No, we've seen some crazy dodges. Girls run in the studio. Some people very scared of the camera, but we might have a fight here. Terminator sending his army up towards the third base. Squirtle, this is a poke. He's very uh, happy that Squirtle does not have his mothership core anywhere nearby. A time warp on that Terminator army might have killed it. And uh, okay. he's, just, he's just basically poking. He's mining a little bit down here at his third base, start to get that fully saturated. And uh, this Zealot run by should easily be denied by a warp in. Might get a probe or two. Nope, not even. Very annoying little bug out here on the AI. All of those probes want to get a piece of that action. At the same time, Terminator bringing his army down here at the bottom. Squirtle responding by bringing his whole army down here. This is basically uh, a game of compositions. And keeping the unit tab open here is actually going to be pretty useful for us. 21 to 10, 22 to 10 zealots. Huge warp in. Meanwhile, going for the counterattack for Terminator. And Squirtle is going to have to go back and defend this. Tempest count only at one right now. Oh, he's got the better cock game at the top of the ramp, though. And Squirtle, he's considering pushing through because he knows he has those Colossi for support. Yeah, keeping those Colossi in that little crater that we have in the middle of this map, you know, going Colossi on this map is actually pretty cool if you can fight there because it's going to be so hard for those Immortals to get any shots on those Colossi unless they get dropped. That is why he's going for these Tempests now. We see one out and the second one has got to come out to possibly defend this drop. Squirtle going for the attack. Yep, he's got a great position on this third base. Squirtle wants to turn this one around. He needs to set up for the engagement, though. That one Tempest at the front getting a little bit ahead of itself. There's not very many stock. There's only a one Archon there as well for anti-air. Making hallucinated Colossi to try to tank shots. Dell is running in here. Meanwhile, will actually have to deal with that cannon first. He's trying to use those Colossi to eliminate his opponent's Zealot so that his Zealot, Squirtle Zealots, can actually get in on the Immortals. But the Tempest of the back are doing so much damage. Tempest in the back doing a ton of damage with a big blink under both of these Tempests. They both go down and all three Colossi are still alive. But the ground army of Squirtle is diminishing here a little bit. No more Zealots. Yeah, he doesn't have the Immortals to help out anymore. He barely he has one Immortal left. He's microing his Colossus here into the War Prism, out of the War Prism. His Oakling Stalkers look like he's going to push this through. A few more Warping in Zealots, though it's not over yet. That hallucinated Colossus is still around. And he needs another warp in the units. The Tempest looks like it will fall, but Stalker's going down as a result. The Immortal holds strong. And with the last Zealots falling, it looks like Squirtle might have just done it. Just way too much ground army. The Tempest switch a little bit too slow, a little bit too late. And he's just really not uh, respected Squirtle's army. GG, and Squirtle, the fist pump, takes game number one. This is the first stepping stone for Incredible Miracle right now, getting a big win out of Squirtle, taking it over Terminator in that PvP. We need two more wins in a row in order to force that death match, force that tie. So he gives a bow, he knows that was a tough fought game. You know, having a, a deficit from the early parts of the game in tech, deciding to go to Colossi and 
instead of countering Colossi with his own Colossus,